Sanding big concave shapes in wood like this here for example is a very difficult task because there's pretty much no power sander that really can do this quickly and efficiently. So in this video I'm going to show you how I built this handheld drum sander with a soft drum that's exactly made for that purpose. It works together with a drill and is cheap and easy to make, doesn't require a lot of tools and I think you can build this in a couple hours. You want to start with a piece of 8mm metal rod, two rollerblade bearings and a few scraps of birch plywood. The rod needs to be about 18 centimeters long. One end should be filed flat, but eyeball precision is enough for that. One end you also need to deburr so you can slide the bearings on. Important, always keep a strong eye contact with your workpiece. On the opposite end though, the bearings need to be stopped. And the easiest and fastest way I think is this. As you can see, this created quite a big burr and for this application is absolutely adequate and took me about 10 seconds to do. Just make sure that the deburred end rests on a softer surface. Next you mark a circle with about 50 millimeter diameter on a scrap piece of plywood. The center gets a hole that fits the outer diameter of the bearings. I want to be able to clamp onto the bearings and fix them in place in this piece with this screw here. And if I need to drill a few holes so the screw fits in there. First I need to drill to this depth here with a bit that's a bit bigger than the screw head. Next to the depth of the slot with a bit that's a bit bigger than the thread. And the rest then with a bit that's smaller than the threads but not all the way through the circle. The slot can be cut by hand. When you cut it out, try to get really close to a 50 mm diameter or a bit more. And there you go. I also installed two washers here, which I will need later in the build. Next you do the exact same thing two more times but with an 8mm hole so you can clamp onto the shaft and instead of one screw for clamping there's also a second hole for another screw. And that's because when I spun this here I could feel how imbalanced it is because there's only one screw you can actually see the shaft wiggling. When you spin these discs and use the tool, well, you will feel this as uncomfortable vibrations. So the solution to that is to add the correct amount of counterweight on the other side here and then it shouldn't vibrate. Off camera I tried clamping it on there, but no matter what I did or how hard I could clamp with these screws, I couldn't prevent the shaft from spinning inside here. So I need to do something else. So I marked where about this disc should be and now I'll try to cut a slot with a Dremel tool into the shaft. Keep the precision at eye levels. The Dremel tool works, but the angle grinder is the much better tool choice. You probably need to deburr that area so the bearings can still slide past that keyway. Now I slide a few washers on here as spacers and then a disc and I align the keyway so it's not in line with the slot and clamp it down. And with that the bearings are now also completely fixed in place. As a key I will now just force a screw into the wood here and that does the job. It's not pretty or elegant, but it's very simple. The next step is to mount a piece of draining pipe, which I already cut to the size sandpaper rolls that I want to use. To mount that, I need to make the discs fit the inside diameter of the pipe. So I jigged it up with my drill here, with the bearing block clamped onto another block so it can't move. 
this piece here being kind of a tourist for a wood file and I keep the drill running with this velcro zip tie. It takes a little bit because you can't be too aggressive with the rasp. Well, I'm not quite there yet. The last bit I did with a file. Great. Now I just switch out the discs and do the same again. Before assembly I make sure the washers are there and the screws are tightened down correctly so there's no axial play because the pipe covers all of them and you will have no access to them anymore. To fix the pipe in place I will drive two nails into the disc and I made a mark right here where I know there is no screw that could interfere with that. That runs pretty good. Next comes the foam. It's just some packing material that I had laying around and I just need to wrap it around here and glue it in place. I cut the foam to the right length so I can fully wrap it around and kind of taper the inner edge so the ends meet properly. Now I'm making a few cuts with a file into the pipe to give the glue some more places to grab onto. I don't know if that really helps, but it definitely can't hurt. As the glue, I'm using Yuhu Pour, which is a contact glue for foam. And that means you just apply it on your pieces. And then you bring the two surfaces together and then separate them again and let it dry for about 10 minutes in air. It's 10 minutes later and when I now bring the two pieces together they will bond instantly. So I have one shot at this. The main thing is I need to bring the ends together. I left the tape on for a little bit and let the glue dry. So let's see. It came out quite good. It's not perfectly round, but I will take care of that in the next step. Probably a pool noodle or some kind of pipe insulation foam would also have worked, but I used what I had on hand. So next I jigged it up again like before and sanded the foam round again. After a while I checked the circumferences at various positions to make sure I make an even cylinder. One millimeter less than 23 in the middle, about two millimeter less than 23 on the left and the same on the right, so a little bit more sanding in the middle. Now it runs nice and true and has a consistent diameter. One problem with that whole thing is the edge of the sandpaper that spins against the rotation. Because as you can see, if this is loose and you sand, it will get pressed against the drum. But this edge, if that catches on anything, it will start to unwrap the whole sandpaper. And that should not happen. But I think I have a solution. On the opposite side of the glue joint on the foam, I will sand a little slot out. So by doing that, the edge that could catch anything will never be able to touch anything because now it sits a little bit lower than the actual sanding circumference. These velcro strips are self-adhesive and if you decide to build this yourself, get the highest quality you can find. It's not very expensive, I had to buy this much, but it was about 7 euros for both. It's worth it. Usually the adhesive on these strips is incredibly strong. But on sanded foam, not so much, so I'm also adding some glue here.
Unfortunately, there is no width available that has the width of the sandpaper, so I have to work with a little bit of overhang here. Now I can add the sandpaper. Two things to notice here. The Velcro stops about 5mm before the foam edge, because I think when I rip the sandpaper off, then always pulling at the exact edge will wear the foam out quickly. And the other thing is I will cut the sandpaper a little bit longer so it kind of overhangs this edge which is already below the other surface and that will definitely prevent this edge from catching on anything and rip off the whole sandpaper. The last thing missing is a handle and it could be anything but since I have a wood lathe I will use it. No matter how you make the handle, just make sure that you have kind of a flange-like section in the front that's a bit bigger in diameter than the disc and a relief cut so maybe the bearings that stick out and the shaft have a place to go. I only spread glue from here to about here so that this part of the disc doesn't get glued on and can still clamp the bearings. I also have an idea for dust collection, which I drew here and transferred this to a piece of wood, which I now can cut out. First, I drill a 12mm hole and glue a dowel into it. Next, I drill a 50mm, a 35mm and a 4mm hole. Next, I'll drill holes to embed this clamping screw similar to the ones before, but this time I will also thread the wood and that's why this hardwood dowel is here. With the screw loose I can now snap this onto the handle and the washers and the flange part of the handle keep it in the right place. And on there I can then tighten it down and prevent it from spinning. The vacuum then just fits in there like so. And that's it. Now making a test piece. I just grabbed a chunk of hardwood and cut a curved shape out of it. With the sander I then sand away all the bands or marks. The dust collection works great, it doesn't leave a dust free surface but catches all the fine dust that would get in the air otherwise. I am extremely pleased with this result and this was only 120 grit sandpaper, so 80 grit or 60 grit would be even quicker. And this will save me a lot of time in my next bigger project. If you'd like to build this yourself I will leave a link to this dust collection adapter Everything else should be clear from this video, it may just vary and depends on the size draining pipe you use for the drum and the size and shape of handle you like, but other than that you should be able to reproduce this with just this video. And also there's one bonus feature with this. If you have a drill press and remove the handle, you can use this as a stationary drum and even support the underside with the bearings if you just make some kind of wooden block that fits the bearings and then can use it like this although this won't be able to sand perfectly straight edges because it's soft but I think it also will have its applications here. Since I'll be using velcro sandpaper rolls yeah keep thinking since I'll be using Velcro hmm, sandpaper rolls, since I'll be using Velcro sandpaper rolls, the next step is of course adding the Velcro material. And if you want to build this yourself, I will leave you a link for a taper, a paper template, taper template. Uh, 